This is the new Toyota iGo, and it's a tiny city car, the smallest vehicle that Toyota has ever sold in Europe. In truth, that's not very interesting. But then neither are Toyota cars. In the main, people buy them because they never break down. But we think the iGo is interesting. Firstly, it looks great, kind of young and cute. Secondly, it's cheap. It costs just £7,000. Now, you might think we're just into solid gold Lamborghinis and Ferraris with jet engines, and you'd be right. But we do love cheap cars, especially clever cheap cars. Let me explain. Some cars are designed and then built cheaply. The iGo was designed to be cheap from the start. It's in its genes. Look at this. In most hatchbacks, the hatch is a piece of metal and glass. In this case, it is just one sheet of glass, which means they save money on expensive metal pressings. And it only needs one gas strut to hold it up. And there's even just one piece of string to hold up the parcel shelf. It all adds up. And look inside. Just simple painted metal and no extra fripperies like dual controls for the windows on the driver's side. In most cars as well, the seats are different for passenger and driver. In this car, they're both exactly the same and that saves costs at the factory. They've also locked a cylinder off the engine, leaving three, which saves money and weight, which means this tiny car has a tiny thirst. It's also put together like Lego, so if you say smack a bumper, it removes with just two bolts. Now, that brings servicing costs down, and that means the insurance is cheaper. It gets a rating of just Group 1. Although it's been built in the cheapest possible way, they've left in stuff that you'd like, little things that make driving civilised. So you get ABS and airbags and you can have sat, nav and air conditioning if you want. But there's other stuff, little touches that let you know they've really thought about it. Here, on the stereo, there's a socket so you can plug your iPod in. So, we like the cut of its jib, but the iGo is a city car. So now we're going to find out if it's nippy, light on its feet, good at changing direction, darting in and out of traffic, that sort of thing. And to do that, we're going to have a game of football. Yes, welcome to the world premiere of iGo Five-A-Side Football. It's a new Top Gear sport. Last year, we tried to get historic people carrier racing off the ground and absolutely nobody could care less. This will probably be the same. The rules are simple. It's playground five-a-side with no goalie. Now, obviously, the players need quality drivers. So, as team captain, I'm going to pick them. Along with the other team captain, Jose Mayrinho. OK, go on, then you pick first. All right, well, I quite like the sound of this Russ Swift bloke. He's been part of a uh, display team and he's appeared on Silla's Moment of Truth, so wow. he must be good. Mr Swift, please. Yeah. Right. Here's your free shirt, mate. I'll Here have the boy then. I'll have Paul Swift, the other half of that duo. Um, he was actually British Auto Test champion in 2004, so there's your T-shirt. Thank you very much. Thank you. Matt Neal, four times British Touring Car Championship champion. I want a bit of age and experience on my team and you can't get more of that than with Tim Harvey. Started racing professionally in 1821. Dan Eve. Current BTCC Championship champion, sir, you've won you. a shirt. Ben Collins, because he's done Formula One testing, he's racing ASCAR, NASCAR. There you go. T-shirt. Robert Huff, already the Sayat Cooper Championship, three times winner. Tom Chilton, youngest ever guy to win a race in the BTCC Championship. What's that got to do with football? Absolutely nothing. James with the Miller players picked, it was time right, for some complex team it. tactics. Okay. Move around and put the ball between those posts. To win the game, you've got to score more goals than the other team, OK? And then, while the teams limbered up, James and I tossed for the kickoff. Uh, heads. Heads it is. Yeah! Good luck then, sir. Red best team win. Fine. Kickoff, this is it. Oh! That's not good. Let's head off number four there. Acceleration's good. The Igo was also agile. Steering on this car is light. It's easy to manoeuvre in a supermarket car park football situation. But more than that, the Igo allowed James to do the first sporting thing in his life. Headed on through. Yes, I've scored a goal at football! Oh, I've scored a goal! I want to kick off, so here it comes. Yes, yes, we're finally getting at a fair end. Oops. Oh, that's a big one. Brakes are pretty good. I'm dribbling. Whoa. 
Then the Reds made a break for the blue goal, but Hammond used the Igo's low weight to make a brilliant interception. That break's good. Next, May in red one was going for a second goal when... Whoa, no, I can't even nail man! I screwed that up! Half time. But the clutch is pleased. And the cars changed ends. Here we go, second half. It's our chance for an equaliser. My kick off. I've done it in and we're off to the goal. Oh no, we've lost possession. Oh no, they're steaming straight for it. <laughs> that was the equaliser for Blue. I'll kick off again and I'm passing it to Russ Swift. Oh, he's punted it straight over their line. Oh, and he's going, he's taking it down the wing. They've cleared it. They're away. By now, we'd found out that the Igo has all the makings of a great little city car. And that was good, as with just a few minutes to go and the scores at one all, the match got dirty. Foul. <laughs> Door ball, that's not allowed. One of the things I will say about his car... Oh, it does withstand quite severe not very well. Oh no, my own man's reversed into me. This is heart stopping stuff. And then, just before the final whistle, with James oh. defending the goal. That I've stalled. Understand it. Magnificent! Yes! Yes! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Wow! What a oh mate! What a great, great piece of goalkeeping! Oh, and I've stalled at the last minute and it won't. That was brilliant. Well, I'm not over the moon, Richard. No, I am, oddly enough. Can we talk about the car? Yes. I think this actually is a great little car. It is. I really do. But it isn't quite as simple as that, because, you see, this is a very small Peugeot, and this over here is an equally small Citroen. Now, don't be fooled by the fact that they've all got slightly different faces. They are, in fact, the same car underneath. They're built in the same factory, they're built by the same people, and they've all got the same engine. But it's not as simple as that either, because the Toyota and the Peugeot both cost £7,000. The Citroen, same car, cost £6,500, 500 quid cheaper. So, the three, go for that one.